Hi, my name is Alex Stanback, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up your uh, software for recording resting membrane potentials. So we're going to start by turning on your power lab. So if you reach behind here, there's a little switch that you're going to flip. So this is your power lab. It's your analog to digital converter. You're going to see lights come on in the front. You're also going to open up lab chart 8. So you're going to close this, go to setup, channel settings, put in one channel, hit OK, come over here, select 2K, then change this to 100 millivolts, and then you're going to choose input amplifier. Now you're going to select differential, and you can leave that checked. So hit OK. So if you hit Start, you're going to get a reading. You can speed this up with this button or slow it down with this button. You're probably going to want it to be slower so you can see the changes. So this is your intracellular amplifier. So we're going to look at how to set that up. You should have your head stage and your uh, ground wire plugged in in the back. This is connected to your power lab. This is a BNC connector, so in case this isn't plugged in or if you want to know how to use it. To unplug it, you have to push in, turn, and then pull out. To plug it in, you have to push it in, and then you need to turn it. Okay, so now we're going to turn it on. So you're going to flip the switch. We're not going to mess with the settings in here. This should be on 200 millivolts. This should be on 20K. Over here, we're not going to inject stimulus right now, so this should be on low and that should be off. So you won't need to mess with any of that stuff. So for the capacity compensation, we want this set to zero. The probe will be on on, and we'll have that set to ground. Okay, so your head stage should already be on your manipulator. So we're going to talk about how to adjust this a little bit. You can turn this knob, and then this piece will slide in and out. You're going to want that tight. It also will slide up and down. Okay, so now we're going to loosen this tip a little bit. So if you hold right here and twist this, you can loosen this so your electrode can go on. You shouldn't have to force anything. If you do, that means it's too tight. So while your partner is dissecting your crayfish, you will want to check your electrode resistance. So you're going to fill your dish with crayfish saline, not water. You're going to take these little wax cubes and you're going to put them on either side to hold the dish in place because you don't want to tip this over. You're going to take your ground electrode and you're going to put it in there. Try to keep the solder point out of it. You can use the wax on it to kind of hold it in place. Okay, so now we're going to look at how to move the manipulator. You're going to have two knobs on either side. The back one should already be loose and this should be tight. So you're going to want to hold your manipulator before you loosen this if you don't it's going to drop down like that. So if you hold it, you can loosen this and then you can move it. You can also slide the whole manipulator forward or backwards. When your partner brings your crayfish, you're going to want to put it over on this side of the dish so you have more freedom to get the electrode in because you don't want to hit the edge. Okay, so now we're going to look at how we're going to fill our glass electrodes. So in the syringe, we have three molar KCL. You have a plastic um, needle kind of thing here. These are really expensive. They're 10 bucks each, so please don't break them or bend them. You're just going to slide that in to the end of the electrode. Go all the way in. Tip it up, and then fill it. You have to hold it up because when you fill it, you'll have a little drop come out the back side of it. So that means it's filled. So when you're done, you can just wipe off the KCL. If you fill it angled like this, it's going to come out the back and slide down. And then when you put it in your prep, you're gonna kill the prep. Whichever partner does this part, you're gonna have KCL on your fingers when you wipe it off the back part. Do not touch your prep. You want your other partner to do that or you're gonna kill the muscle. So now we're gonna mount the glass electrode onto our electro holder. So we're gonna slide So we're going to slide this in, 
If you remember from before, we loosened this up, so it should slide in without any resistance. You can turn it a little bit to kind of get it in there. So now that we see that it's in there, we can tighten this. And now we're going to move this whole thing over and get the tip of the electrode in the saline. So we can move this to get it in the saline. So when we're setting up the manipulator, you want to make sure that this is all the way up at the highest point and that this is all the way at the farthest point back. This is going to give you the most freedom. Okay, so now we're going to zero the difference between our glass electrode and our ground wire. So if we zero the amplifier, we look here and we have a value that isn't zero. So we're going to adjust this until we get it down to zero or as close as you can get it. Point 0.1 or point 0.2 would be okay to work with here. So now to test the electrode resistance, we're going to press and hold this button right here and we're going to see a value. So this is giving us a 1 nanoamp current injection. So we have 14.1 millivolts, which by the Ohm's law will relate to 14.1 mega ohms. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to try to record it on the chart. So if you hit the start button and then you press that button again, you should see it spike up like that and when you let go it'll drop back down. So if you take your cursor and you put it up here, we can look up here and get a readout that says 14.29 millivolts. This might be off a little bit from what you saw on the amplifier. So to check this, we can grab the marker, bring it over here to baseline, put your cursor up here, and then we can see the difference, which is 13.8 millivolts. So now that we have our electrode resistance measured, we can begin to measure a membrane. So throughout this, you can measure this on your computer, or you can just record your digital readout. You're going to want to check this as you go throughout. If you see this number drop drastically, you probably broke your electrode. This might be because the muscle fiber twitched, or maybe you hit it against the side of the glass. Okay, so now we're ready to stab our muscle fiber. So you're going to come over here, and you're going to hold this while you loosen this. So you can go ahead and tip this into the saline. Get it over near your muscle fibers. So you can go in or out, or up or down, and this one goes sideways. So one partner is going to be looking in the microscope to see if they can get the glass electrode in the muscle fiber. You're probably not going to be able to see the tip of the electrode because it's really, really small. What you're going to want to watch for is when the electrode hits the muscle, it's going to create a dimple. So when that happens, you're going to be looking in here, your partner's going to be watching this number. If you don't see the readout you want yet, you can try tapping the back of this to push it in just a little bit farther. So your resting membrane potential that you see should be anywhere from minus 40 to minus 60 if you have normal saline. Okay. Now that we have a nice membrane potential, we can come over here and we can pull the electrode out and while you're looking in here, go over just a little bit and go back in. This knob goes left or right and this can push it back in. So you should be able to do this relatively quickly. You're going to take three different ones and then take the average of that. Switch your saline out and do it again.